Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we are working on this dresser chest of drawers that I found on Facebook and someone painted it white and green and I don't know why, but they did. And the woman I bought it off said there was some glue issues on top. So I assume the veneer was bubbled up and you can kind of feel some of the issues on top. The drawer pulls seemed to be in good condition. There was one missing screw, but other than that, it seemed pretty good. And look at the side here. You can just tell this wood is going to be pretty nice on the inside. So I couldn't tell much about this piece, but this was the only stamp on it. It says Paris, France trademark, and that's all it says. If anyone knows any information about this piece, I'd love to hear more. This video is sponsored by Snapfresh, and I'll be using their tools throughout this video and their rotary toolkit, which is pretty cool. It comes with 77 accessories, so you need to check it out. All the links will be in the description below. All right, first thing we're going to do is remove all these drawer poles. They're solid wood. Let's get to it. Number one. I put tape on the screw holes so stripper wouldn't drip down. And I also cut up some plastic bags to cover the stripper. Okay, I'm using Easy Strip Low VOC Paint Varnish Stripper. I'm gonna put a lot of this stuff on and throw some plastic garbage bags over everything and come back tomorrow morning and hope all the paint is off. So, shake it up. I applied a lot of stripper, but I knew gravity would just drip most of it down on the sides, so I didn't expect it to work first try on the sides very well, but I tried to throw as much on as possible. Then I wrapped the entire piece up with plastic just to keep the stripper wet while I let it sit overnight. Absolutely nothing. How does that happen? Like, didn't even peel up at all. Okay, so right on the back, it says do not let Easy Strip dry out. If it dries, it will stop working. And if it does dry, it says reapply. So let's reapply this and wait another hour to see if it does anything. Some parts are gonna come up, but what a weird red look, <laughs> so strange. I started scraping the top and it was working okay. I think there was a lot of wax or something on this piece that was just making a lot harder to scrape up. The stripper wasn't really activating as well. So I am gonna scrape as much up as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna throw some more stripper on this piece to do a second coat to really get rid of the rest of the paint. I didn't expect the sides to scrape off that much, but it wasn't too bad on the first try. Sometimes paint stripper works great and will bubble up like this, but I think it depends on the type of paint, how much you apply, and how tight you have it sealed off so it doesn't dry up. So 
definitely try to make it air tight so it doesn't dry up like this one did but i also think the finish on this one was protecting the paint and making the stripper not work as well so we'll just apply another coat sometimes it takes one sometimes it takes two or three so whatever it takes to get this paint off i'll be satisfied when it all when it all comes off Hey, if you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notifications so you don't miss out on my future furniture videos. I appreciate the support. Thanks so much. I also started a newsletter, so if you want some more information that might not be in my videos or discounts to tools and stuff like that, you can find it in my newsletter. So make sure to subscribe and sign up to the newsletter as well. The sign up link is in the description below. I decided to pop this back trim piece off, but I didn't realize there were screws going up under it. I could have just unscrewed them, but my bad. I just popped it off. <laughs> anyway, I'm using mineral spirits here with steel wool. I find this is a great way to get rid of the stripper goo that's stuck on the top, and it also helps remove any of the paint that is still sticking on. You just scrub it pretty hard, and this is 0000, zero, zero, zero grit steel wool so it's really fine it's not going to scratch anything up and then i just use some more mineral spirits in a rag and just wipe everything clean as best as i can i did go around with my carbide scraper on the legs and a few areas where the paint just wouldn't pop off I was pretty excited. The veneer looks so amazing. So here are those three screws I was talking about. Let's get rid of them. Right now this piece is looking pretty rough, but my goal at the moment is to remove all the white paint in the cracks. So I use these little scraper tools and some sandpaper and I go around and remove all the white paint. This brass wire brush was also perfect for getting in there to remove the paint. Now the paint is removed from the corners as best as I could and now we're moving on to the top veneer here. As you can see there is a lot of bubbling going on. It's almost like this perfect rectangular shape so something was probably placed on it and uh, these edges here were also peeling up pretty easy and there were a few chips throughout. So I was trying to figure out what my plan was going to be. Am I going to remove all this veneer or what else can I do? So I started off 
by just ripping up as much of the veneer as I could with a scraper just to see what bubbled areas I could remove. Then use my carbide scraper just to clean up any of the old finish that was still stuck on. One fifty. Pause, let's play a quick guessing game. How many seconds until this knife falls off from me standing on top? A, B, C, or D? Take your guess. And C, 43 seconds is the winner. After sanding, the veneer was cleaned up and it looked so nice. I was sad that I couldn't keep it, but I decided that we were going to re-veneer the piece. And uh, it was my first time, so I reached out to Chris from Optimum Modern. And he gave me a few tips and said I could level the surface and I decided to use Bondo and we are going to fill in the damages on top and make the surface nice and flat for some new veneer. Just mix the hardener and the filler together and mix it up and it is ready to go. I'm filling in the screw holes as well as we will veneer right over them. I really wanted to make sure I had enough filler in the holes so I didn't have to come back and re-bondo the areas. So I threw a lot on in certain areas. And I also bondoed the edges here and had to be careful not to go over the edge so the bondo wouldn't stick onto the corners. And here is what all the Bondo looks like on the veneer damages. I came back the next day. The Bondo was hard and ready for sanding. I threw on 150 grit sanding mesh and I started sanding the Bondo smooth. Oop. 
You want it as smooth as possible. When you close your eyes and run your fingers over it, you shouldn't be able to tell the Bondo and the veneer is a different surface because if there's any issues, and bumps or anything, the new veneer will have a chance to pick it up and it won't look good when you have that new veneer on. Finally, it was time to sand the rest of the piece. This oscillating tool by Snapfresh was perfect for sanding these corners that my random orbital sander couldn't reach. So I just threw on the sandpaper and the proper attachment and just sanded the corners and close to the corners and it worked out perfectly. This is the sheet of veneer I'm using. It's a walnut veneer that I found at Lee Valley Tools. And I'm just gonna lay it out flat here so it kinda flattens itself out. And before I get started, I'm gonna use a tack cloth and we are gonna get rid of all the dust possible. Anything on this top we want gone. And I'm gonna measure the top to make sure I cut enough veneer. And then I tape the edges here so I don't have contact cement to get on these corners. Here's the contact cement I'm using. 
I start by mixing it up and then I put it in a paint tray and I'm using this foam, high density foam roller and I thought this would work out well but I started applying it and as I'm rolling it you can kind of see it strings up as I roll it out. It wasn't too bad on the first coat on the top here but when I applied it directly to the paperback veneer as I was rolling it it was sticking and clumping and almost like the contact cement was drying too quickly and the roller was just peeling it up so I actually throw it on this piece of veneer but there were so many clumps that I decided okay let's get a chip brush and throw it on the other piece of veneer that I still had I did not want to risk any bumps in the surface on top of this dresser the chip brush here applied way easier and smooth Since I was rushing, I didn't cut this veneer down to the right size, so it's a little bit bigger than it was supposed to be. Also, shout out to Jay from Flipping Drawers. He helped answer a few questions along the way to make the process a bit easier. I was struggling a little bit here to get the veneer straight. It was sticking onto the tape a bit, but I did end up eventually getting it nice and straight. When you apply contact cement, you wait 15 to 20 minutes for the contact cement to kind of dry. It's not really sticky anymore to touch, but when you put them together and then push them together, they hold on like crazy. Here I'm using a board that I sanded at the end and kind of rounded it off so it wouldn't scratch up the veneer surface. And you just want to apply pressure so the contact cement on both ends sticks together. I'm clamping on my level here just to use it as a guide. I don't have a router, so I'm just going to use a sharp utility knife to cut off the extra veneer. Where I cut the veneer, there was some contact cement that was dry and you can kind of see it. So I'm using the rotary tool here with some sandpaper and you just gotta make sure you get the right attachment pieces in, clamp in sandpaper, make it tight and turn it on and you are good to go. And this worked perfect for cleaning up the glue along the edges. It's great because you can make it go faster. So you just pick your speed with this dial here. Cleaned it up nicely and then I just sanded the rest smooth with the 400 grit around the rest of the edges. Because I use Bondo and it's blue, you can see it on the edges. So I'm going to use some shellac and some powder stains and we are just going to apply it over the blue areas and some of the glue areas as well.
Then I finally began sanding everything smooth with 240 grit. I sanded the veneer to make it smooth, and then I sanded the rest of the piece to clean up any of the old finish that might have still been on it or any imperfections in the finish. One of the drawers had some veneer sanded through and I made sure not to sand through the veneer so this was already there when I started but I just took some markers a black and a dark brown and just made some lines here to kind of create some grain so when I stain it it will kind of match up a bit nicer and then I used a tack cloth to clean everything up I'm using Antique Walnut Gel Stain by General Finishes, and this stuff is easy. You just take a rag, get a clump, and you just throw this stuff on, wipe it on, and then we're gonna wipe it off. I am staining this in sections. Sometimes I do it all at once, but it all depends on the weather. It was pretty warm this day, so the gel stain sometimes dries pretty quick. And when it does, I like to do it in sections instead of all at once. Now it's time to strip these drawer pulls to see what we're dealing with. I put them in a plastic bag and put a lot of stripper in and just tied them up and made sure they would not dry out. And here's what they look like the next day.
It was pretty nasty, but the paint was ready to come off. Then I used mineral spirits and a rag to clean everything up. I was out of steel wool. Some of the veneer was peeling on the drawer poles, so I took some wood glue and brushed them in and then taped them up. Now it's time to spray some water-based poly, but if you want a more in-depth guide of this sprayer, see my last video. All right, I'm using the 1.8 size nozzle here. We're gonna throw it right on, put the cap on. All right, about 500 milliliters, and I'm gonna add about 10% water, so this is about uh, 50 milliliters. Before spraying, you wanna make sure there's no dust around, so I use a damp cloth and clean the inside, and then I use a tack cloth to clean the entire exterior surface so there's no dust on the surface when we spray the poly. I ended up spraying three coats of water-based poly, but I'm not gonna show you the same process over and over. So let's move on to these drawer pulls. After allowing the glue to dry, I took all the tape off and we are gonna sand these nice and smooth, and then we can apply some gel stain on these as well. I must say these drawer pulls look so good. I'm gonna protect them with lacquer. I'm just using this spray can and I apply three coats of lacquer. Now let's take off the remaining tape and let's put these drawer pulls on. And finally, let's take another look at this piece before. I can't believe there was so much white and green paint all over this piece. It's a shame because the wood underneath is just so beautiful and it was a lot of work to get rid of it. But just a quick reminder again of the bubbled veneer we had to deal with. And that was a lot of work as well. But here it is one last time. And here is what it looks like after. I can't believe that veneer was covered up. It's so beautiful and sadly we had to replace the veneer on top, but this stuff turned out pretty good as well. The legs are very nice solid wood and the drawer pulls I loved so much, I must say. And here's just a different view from each angle. And here's what the side of the drawers look like all cleaned up. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you click the subscribe and bell notification. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to check out how to support the channel in the video description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.